Hi, this is Andy Neal, and this is a Motion Quick Tip. Drop zones are a very handy feature in Motion. They allow you to create animations with placeholders and then add video or images later. Now I have this little project here, which is a couple of drop zones, that I want to place some uh, pictures into. So I'm going to go back to the first one here, go to my file browser, and choose Mount Rushmore for my first drop zone. Then scrub forward to my second drop zone and I'm going to drop a lake picture on there. Now both of these are not exactly what I want. Now for the Mount Rushmore picture I'd like to see the framing of Mount Rushmore be a little closer. Get a little more of the presidents, a little less of all this extra stuff on the sides. For the lake picture I obviously don't want this ugly white border on the side of my beautiful lake picture. But if I select the drop zone and go to the inspector, I don't really have much in the way of options for choosing how to fit the image into the drop zone. One is fit, that's the default, and what it does is it scales an image up or down so that it fills all four sides, but it maintains the correct aspect ratio of the image or the video. Center will place the video or image at its actual size without any scaling whatsoever and puts it in the exact center of the drop zone. Now in this particular case this is almost good. It's almost what I want. It's a little bit too close. This is still cutting off George Washington's head and uh, a little bit of Abraham Lincoln there. But it's, uh, it's much closer than the first choice. The final one is called stretch and what stretch will do is ensure that the entire image or video is fit into the drop zone regardless of whether or not it has to change aspect ratio. And as you can see right here, it kind of squeezes it down. I'm going to change it back to fit and then scroll down to the second picture. And my choices here don't help much either. Changing this to center cuts off my mountains. Changing it to stretch gives me even more of the border that I don't want. So what I really need is some more control. Luckily, there is a workaround. If I go back to the beginning here, to my first drop zone, what I'd like to do is first of all clear my drop zones. So I'm going to just hit clear here to turn it back into a regular drop zone. And I'm going to do that for the second one as well. With the drop zone HD selected, the first thing I want to do is I want to group it. So I right click, choose group from the menu, and I want to make this a 2D group. Now it's important that this is a 2D group, but it's okay, it's inside of a 3D group, so the cameras and lights will still affect it, okay? Now that I have my 2D group, reselect the drop zone HD, and then duplicate it by hitting Command D on the keyboard. Then let's name this, we'll call this mask, because what we're gonna do is create an image mask. Select drop zone HD one, and go to object, add image mask or use the shortcut which is shift command M and then drag this duplicate layer onto the image mask. Now let's drop our picture back in there, our Mount Rushmore, but this time we can now resize. Go to the inspector and the properties tab of the inspector and scale it up and now I can resize it to wherever I want and reposition it however I see fit. By using a duplicate of the original drop zone layer as the source for its own mask, we've essentially created a window with our drop zone behind it. This allows us to resize the drop zone, but we'll only ever see what's inside the window. Now we just need to do that to our second image. All right, once again, I'm going to select the drop zone HD and I'm going to right click, choose group from the menu, make it a 2D group then select it again and duplicate it with Command D and I'll rename this Mask2. Then with the Drop Zone HD2 selected, I'm going to use the shortcut this time, Command Shift M to create a image mask and I'm going to drop Mask2 into the image well to make that the source. Now I can go to my file browser, drag my lake picture onto my drop zone and then select my drop zone 
and scale it and position it however I like. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit until I get rid of that border and then maybe drag it down a little kind of like that. Looks good. All right, do a quick render and see how it looks. All right, looks good. One caveat that I'll make with this is that because we're using a mask on our drop zone, this will not work if you have images or drop zones in 3D space with reflections. Using an image mask precludes the use of reflections, but you can get all other 3D elements like shadows and lights will all work in this particular case. I'm Andy Neal, and this has been a Motion Quick Tip.